8.2, numbers 2 and 3. In section 8.2, we're going to be multiplying, dividing, and simplifying radicals. So we're going to do simplifying square roots and also simplifying cube roots. So let's look first at number 2. Number 2, we have a question where we want to multiply these two radicals. And here's the property that we're going to be using when we multiply radicals. If you have two numbers A and B in radicals being multiplied together, it's the same thing as putting them both inside or underneath the radical and multiplying them like that. And that's for non-negative A and B. And for this whole course, we're going to be using non-negative numbers inside the radical. So let's look at how we do that for number 2. Root 2A times root 5B. We put them both under the same radical. And that would give us root 10 AB, and then we'd be done. That's the answer to that one. Now we can use this property going in the other direction too. Instead of combining them under one radical, we can take them out and put them under two separate radicals. And that will be one of the properties we use when we try to simplify a radical. To simplify a radical means to perform the radical as completely as possible. All right, so in other words, if we have root 50, we want to take as much of a square root as possible here. But in order to do that, we need to see what is 50 made out of. What factors is it made out of? It's made out of 25 times 2 would be one way to look at it. We could also look at it as 5 times 10. And what you want to do whenever you're trying to simplify something is pick the factoring form that gives you a perfect square root. All right, that is a perfect square. 25. Square root of 25 would be 5. So we're going to use that factoring form. And we're going to use that property where we can break them up under their own radicals to help us finish it. So we have 25 times 2 is the same as root 25 times root 2. So we go ahead and we do the root 25 is 5. And we're going to multiply it times root 2, and there's nothing we can do to the root 2. And let's look at another problem, number, actually two more, number 11 and 13. We're going to use the same kind of a uh, property now, except we're going to do it for division. So if you're dividing two separate roots, it's okay to combine them under the same root and do the division. And it goes the other way too. Again, non-negative A and B. And in this case, B cannot be 0 because we don't want 0 in a denominator. So let's take a look at number 11. Simplify root 49 over 81. So we break it up. So we don't want to do out 49 divided by 81. That's just going to give us some decimal, and it's not going to be nice to try to get the perfect root of that. So we do root 49 over root 81, and that works out easily to 7 over 9. So you pretty much do whatever's convenient. If it helps you do the problem to put them under their separate roots, you do that. And in number 13, we'll see the opposite situation. It's going to help us to put them under a common root. We could go ahead and try to simplify root 18. Uh, we can't do anything to root 2 and take it from there and see if we can get some canceling. But you know what? It's going to be a lot easier if we just recognize that 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 9 is a perfect root. So let's go ahead and rewrite this under one radical. And that gives us root 9, which is 3. And that would be the answer there.